Oh. <laughs> It's dangerous to run around here, boys. Grandpa, hurry! Hurry Grandpa, up! Grandpa, you're too slow!
Right, so, Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. What a bizarre game this is. But I also love it. It's definitely won me over over the years. And um, it's sort of Twin Peaks meets Silent Hill. So if you're a fan of David Lynch and sort of eccentric characters, this game's definitely something you should check out. Um, the gameplay and graphics are very, well, flawed, to be honest. It's the story and the atmosphere that definitely make this game what it is. So let's just... Um, Jump straight on in. We've got another cutscene coming up. Not quite as weird as one we've just seen, but <laughs> let's uh, go for it. Another story. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so how about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. Do you think you can be a good girl and listen all the way to the end? Is it a scary story? It might be. But it's also a very uh, important story. If you don't want to hear it, I can tell you a different story. No, I want to hear it. This way, I won't be scared. Will you turn on the TV then? Leave the sound down like always. Okay, so I am confused as well, don't worry. <laughs> this is a very bizarre game and has an unfortunately bad first impression. Um, you cannot judge it by the first half an hour, it does get better, believe me. Could you wait just a little longer? This won't take long. I think we're in some sort of purgatory or something, I don't know. Anyway, what's over here? Oh, that's space to zoom in, okay. Take item, observe. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting. It will start soon. It's about time to get started. I love the music as well, it's so eerie. Zach. Zach, can you hear me? 
It's me, York. If you can hear my voice, could you respond? Oh, quick time event. <laughs> there we go. Good. I thought you went to sleep. Zach, don't be surprised. The crime took place out in the country this time. Let's take it slow. Okay, Zach? Sure, that's one way of looking at it, but it's totally wrong. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. His actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? Zach, I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper, even if it ends up being a waste of time. At the very least, it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zach? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. I now have a scar to show off. You see this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. Don't you agree, Zach? Zack, there goes the civilized world. Right, so here we go. Um, now this game came out in 2010, and uh, it doesn't look like it, I know, but um, it's it's the atmosphere and the story that make this game worth playing, so bear that in mind. The, the graphics and the gameplay all um, leave a lot to be desired. Though it's not a bad looking game, it's just not good for its time. Right, so we've got a steel pipe. So we've got melee weapons and shooting in this, none of which work too great, but uh, they're functional. We've got this profiling feature where we just like 
all collected evidence. She just sort of thinks it through and comes up with conclusions. It's quite weird. I mean, the whole game's weird, to be honest. Looks like we're being welcomed. That's why I love it. Zach, I'll let it's you a game like no right. other. Right, sprint. Okay. So yeah, as I said, this is not the best first impression for the game. It's actually an open world detective thriller, believe it or not. But it makes you go through this bizarre, nightmarish, wannabe Silent Hill bit first. And it's just not the best first impression. Oh, the dog. Huh? And the sky is really weird, what's going on? Right. Weapon. <laughs> For safety. So these guys are like your basic zombie style monsters. But with a twist, they actually bend over backwards and come at you from behind. So, it's an interesting twist. Or an otherwise basic character. Right. Can of pickles. Okay. It's got a very uh, JRPG feel to it at, at times. You got Mysterious Shadow. Okay, whatever. Space, okay. Whoa, that's weird aiming. Okay. So you can lock on, and then once you're locked on, you can move around. It's not great, but it, it gets the job done, I guess. Oh, sweet Jesus. Headshot. Yes. Or another one. I mean, it's really not scary. <laughs> it's not meant to be either. It's just meant to make you think, what the hell? And it does that. Did I kill him? Yeah, nice one. Okay, so yeah, we're in a very linear bit right now, so we can't go that way. So I'm guessing I opened the door over here. I've been through a lot of crazy situations, but... That one. That one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. Zack? Can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zack? And the phone's ringing. This is a save um, icon, by the way. I will save just in case. Yes. That was quick. So, back to Twin Peaks. Uh, similarities between these two involve basically the same premise. You know, some girl's been murdered. An out-of-town detective comes down to... Sorry, an out-of-town special agent comes down to investigate. Everyone's all eccentric and weird. 
and basically the detective loves coffee, uh, just like in Twin Peaks. He's obsessed with coffee, and that's definitely a big reference. And you'll get that if you have, if you've ever watched the. Uh, ooh. Yeah, to anyone who's actually watched Twin Peaks, that they'll know the coffee reference is quite important. Now, can we shoot these boxes? We can, but that's a lot, a lot of ammo. Um. Got a choice of which way to go. Oh, okay. A shot. Don't block my shot. Ah, nice one. Did I get him? Yes. Yeah. Oh, another one just came out the ground. Right, can we get this one here? Yes, we can. Yeah, the aiming's not too bad, actually. You get used to it. Whoa. What I might do is go to some melee, just for variation. I'll use my steel pipe. What? Why can't I get the... That was weird. Oh, nice. It's quite effective. Now, I've never been killed by these guys. I don't know what they actually do to you. I don't know if they bite you or possess you or whatever. I'm not too sure. So you've got a locker here, which you can't use yet, anyway. And this has an axe in it. So if you look at this, three pieces of evidence is basically what he's trying to profile together. So we've got two out of three so far. We need one more bit of evidence. <gasps> You've got fuse box. Cool. Right. I'm sensing more monsters outside, so... Back to the pistol. Now I think the uh, things in here. Okay. Hold on a second. Yes, knew it. Great puzzle solving right there. So whenever they're sort of like disintegrating, you can't actually move anywhere in that area. Bit of a dated design there. Okay. Yeah, we're killing these problem solving bits. <laughs> Back we go. Anything else in here? Nope. Oh, 
Bullseye. Boom. I've actually got to say, headshots are actually really satisfying. Amazing. But the, the aiming's a bit stiff. When you move the mouse, it doesn't always move with you. <laughs> but a bit of practice and it should be fine. Is he still alive? No, he's not. Right, now we can finally move on. No, we can't. What am I doing? I'm supposed to go through here. Alright, it's nearly at the end now of this first prologue bit. Oh no. Again, Resident Evil we're aiming seems to be quite a common game design these days. Uh, there. Perfect. She's... Yeah. Another one with a pitchfork. Not a threat at all, though. Yes. Can we get this guy here? Yes. Oh, no, oh, no he's still alive. Yes. Damn it! Okay. Okay. Any more? I think there's a few more that come out the ground. What we'll do is we'll grab the metal. Shoot this guy. Whoa! Jesus Christ. Fast forwarding towards me. There we go. Okay, finally. Let's just run towards the quick time event coming up. Which is a really nasty quick time event. I'm just gonna run past them. Go, go, go. Right, I think we're done now. We're nearly done. Oh, wrong button. That was really quick. Ah, oh, I knew I'd fail that. I always click um, E instead of R. Always done that since I started playing this game. So let's try and press the right button this time. Oh, come on. I pressed that in time, I swear to God. Okay. It's just so quick that bit. The R lasts there for like half a second. Um, well, where do I go now? I think this way. Phew, and we're done with the admittedly pretty crap prologue sequence. <laughs> but now the game gets good. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zack? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Okay, we're back in the real world. And, uh... I'm gonna save just in case. Uh, yes. Okay, so, now we haven't got a car, so we've got to run the whole way <laughs> to the bridge. Um, yeah, let's do it then. This is our fastest sprint we have. 
Ooh, metal. So the city is called Greenvale. It's actually quite a nice, relaxing uh, town. Sorry, not city. Town. And, um, yeah, it's definitely very Twin Peaks style. Now you were very late. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zach? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small-town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profile. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <clears throat> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right, don't worry. I'll get my assistant, Thomas, to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks. That'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that. Duh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that. Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. <laughs> Zach, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just... Met the king. <laughs> it's broken. I've been using that one for a long time. Why don't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. 
I've never been to a movie theater, though. Now oh, we're back in here again. Right, so, sugar donuts, I'll take that. This is basically health, by the way, so food items and um, med kits are health. Do we go here? Okay, thank you for that. Right, let's leave. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Hurry. Like this. Cover your mouth. Okay. Ugh. So you've got to hold it down. It's not a very challenging minigame, <laughs> to be fair. If you have to tap it, it'll be harder, but you're just holding it down. I actually used to hold my breath with them to see if I could make it. <laughs> and, I, and I could, I was quite proud of myself. I don't know what they represent. I haven't made it far enough in the game to, you know, find out what they are, why they're why they're about. Who are you? Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Yes, we do. So that was a dream, then. That room. That makes sense. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. Not a bad little hotel room. I really room. need some Damn. coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. It's cost a fortune. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? What is that? Like a... That's bigger than the king... That's not a king-size bed, tell you that much. That's like twice as big. Right, um, won't save yet. Now, this is a huge <laughs> hotel. Hmm. 
Now I think we actually go this way. There we do, yes. So we've got the main lobby here. Um, dining room there. But is that where breakfast is? No. In here. Love the music that plays during this sequence. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then. Thank you, Polly. I'm starving. <laughs> Look at the size of that table. Right, Mr. Morgan? Uh, yes. yes. It's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. I can see why. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly. I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Uh, yeah, why not? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. Hmm. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? No. I'm done. <laughs> this is a long cutscene. But I do well, love it when Mr. they're sitting Morgan, on I'd that better table. better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. 
I'll be right back with it. Moment of truth, here we go. Uh, look with interest, okay? Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In. The coffee. <laughs> I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. Okay, one sip of coffee. Bloody hell, it's a big place, isn't it? Uh... Might as well just leave. Can we do anything else? Can make more coffee. This is a nice hotel. I'd, st I'd stay here, definitely. Um, let's buy a lollipop. <laughs> what? $24 for a lollipop. Are you kidding me? Uh, no, no way. Uh, finish. Rip off. quick which now brings us to the driving section of the game which is quite unpolished to be honest but I like the fact it's there you know what I mean Police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. Okay, um... Okay, that'll be fine. <laughs> you got master key. And a flare. So by default, we're in this sort of uh, first-person mode, which I quite appreciate. You got the sat nav, everything. Um, however, I like this one the most. But the driving's very floaty and weird, <laughs> and the music's so um, dramatic. It's quite funny. And you'll find that he talks to himself a lot during drives like this. So, Zach, about those bonus features in TVDs now. He talks about real life pop culture you know, the as well. From it's the awesome. 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there, just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. 
It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87 minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zack. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. So as you can see, the, uh, the bar is closed, but you can actually go to these places normally. Um, a lot of the interiors are closed most of the time. Um, they have opening hours, which is quite cool, normally between like 9 and 5, as you'd expect. So it's quite realistic in that matter. So yeah, we've already had um, Tom and Jerry and Star Wars as uh, references to real life franchises. We also get stuff like Die Hard and stuff, it talks about a lot of films, actually. Nice little touch. Oh, I missed a turning. Whoa. So you can maybe explore the town a bit later. It's actually quite big. Uh, how do I bring up the map? There we go. Um, okay, I can't zoom out, but that's basically um, how you get around. such a small town. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Yeah, I forgot to mention for some reason. Um, Zach is like his imaginary friend who he keeps talking to. Uh, never, I don't really know... <sighs> If you find out more about it later on. But for now, it's just a, a quirky trait he has. <laughs> uh, uh... Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no, just doing my job. I just, well, I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but... I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Of course you have. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. Let me know when things are ready. Of course, he lost the key. That's Zach, the first objective. <laughs> to be the Classic video game mission type. design there. Find totally the key. Totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. I love the music. It's so weird. Ah, uh, what a game. Right, so... Go in here first, I think. By the way, in this video, we won't get to any of the good stuff. We're just going to be getting past all this sort of intro sequence stuff before the video ends because it is a very long game and all the intense stuff happens about three hours into it and we're not going to get that far on this video huh okay right so let's find the key then shall we uh. You can't see him to find the key. Okay, so it's a, it's a southern flying squirrel. Okay. So we've got to search through every damn room in this place to find a specific key. 
Right, this one. Pointy-tailed flying squirrel. That's not the one, but I'll take it anyway. Um... Don't mind me, just walking around. Uh, hmm. Now there, there's a key down here, but I don't know how to get to it. Oh. <laughs> ah, is it in here? Curly-tailed flying squirrel. We want a southern flying squirrel. I don't know if that is one, though. Hmm. Okay, back upstairs. We'll try something else. Or... Try around here. Aha! Uh -huh. Striped squirrel. Hmm. Well, we'll try these ones for now. We'll see if these are the correct ones. Uh. Did I find it? Good question. <laughs> um, let's go for this one here. You found the key. I hope this is the right one. Uh, you found a Siberian chipmunk this time, have you? Sorry, wrong key. A no. Siberian chipmunk? This species lives in northern Japan I don't care on the island of Hokkaido. <laughs> They're actually quite a popular pet. So it isn't even a squirrel. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Okay. Right, come on, Thomas. Let's get this right. We'll go for... Pointy or curvy? Curvy. You found the key. That's the right one. Come on, be the right one. Yes, no. Yes. Oh, thank God. A southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. <laughs> okay, I'll be waiting for you. Love how eccentric well, everyone is. It's so cool. We've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him, and some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually, I, well, I, I baked them myself. Mm, that's amazing. 
What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here? Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. <laughs> Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Yeah, good damn it, George. In we go. This is um, part three, episode one, then, all top zero. Agent Morgan, okay. get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Mm. Yeah, George. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. I mean, to be fair, both George and Emily are both normal people. Um, everyone else, however, are completely mental. <laughs> uh, where's the exit? Aha. Uh -huh. so I've got to drive within the speed limit, okay. Don't know what that is, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out. I might do a first person with this, as we've got company, which we can look at and talk to. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Oh, my game froze. That's weird. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Whoa! Okay. Relationships and I'm just going to look ahead from now on. I'm not going to look to the side. I don't get on very well with... Keep your eyes on the roads, kids. Surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, right, mate. they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. So, Emily, tell me. Where is am there I going? Really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city. Have I gone the wrong way eyes, completely. But any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zack, there he is. The monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Ah, Did I took a wrong turn, that's Agent why. Morgan? No, nothing, George. I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. Badly. <laughs> this is the worst driving I've ever done. Okay, that's better. So I should just follow the road, I should be okay. Okay, put the map away. I like the uh, the rain on the on the windscreen. Nice touch there. Oh, so I went the wrong way again. <laughs> but I finally found my way. I had to pause the game and find the map and uh, look there.
I think we're still on time, surprisingly. Just over there. Oh, can't take a shortcut. That's annoying. Done. That's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning. No, no, it's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Sheriff. Freckly Fiona. <laughs> really? What a name. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. How did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. <laughs> Besides, that scar in your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small, traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. All right. Um, what do I do? Okay, that was helpful. Wait, what? I can shave? It's random. <laughs> okay, nice one. Just getting sidetracked, as you do. And I get paid for shave? That's the most random thing I've ever done. Aha, I'm closing in. I got lost there for a second. <laughs> Just keep running. And we are there. Yeah. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. 
Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer, and a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? Oh god, I'm on crap at chess. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh... Zach, something is still missing. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there. Clues. Help, anyone? Yeah, no shit. But I don't remember all of the names of the pieces. If you look carefully around the room, you'll see the answer. Okay, okay, I get ya. So another thing about this game is, um, you actually get quite interesting crime scenes, and you have to um, you basically survey them like you do in L.A. Noir and collect evidence and profile it. It's all really good stuff. Then you also get these sort of bizarre puzzles to solve. And I'm terrible at chess, so yeah. I've got to memorise what it looks like. So I know the knight, I know the knight, I know the pawn, the rook, bishop, queen, okay. Um... Um, hell yeah. Wait, is that right? Oh, nice. The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Ah. <laughs> the music, once again, is amazing. It's so David Lynch, I love it. Right, where do I go? Okay, over here. So now we're going into the morgue, I think. I've got to say, the story is actually really interesting. It does give you the sense of, you know, mystery and like, you want to know what the hell's going on. That's what a good game should do, so... Got to give it credit for that. Really? I've got to go round. <laughs> Fair enough. Ooh, another uh, medal. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. 
We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck, but after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Hannah's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usha, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. Okay. So we're going to end the video very shortly after this bit, but this bit's really interesting, so... <laughs> We're going to keep this in. Uh. Uh. This is sort of like L.A. Noir, but without touching the body. Uh, uh. 
<laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> and this body's lying on the table. Yeah, that's not really helpful, mate. Um. Okay. Right, so there are all the clues. Okay, fine. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining. But you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. <sighs> Jackpot sack. A shame, but our old time all American sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. There you go. Amazing, huh? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes queen, his rook takes your queen, then your knight takes rook, and checkmate. Huh? Oh. <sighs> My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Zack, they're here. Okay, so I'm going to end the video there. Um, that was a really interesting segment right there. Um, 
definitely got pretty grim, <laughs> but that was awesome. And uh, I'm going to end the video because the video has been long enough. I don't want it to be too long. Um, I could return with a part two um, as the action's about to increase from this point onwards. Um, but either way, yeah, uh, this game got a lot of um, criticism for its graphics and gameplay. But at the same time, most people agreed that the story, atmosphere, characters and the overall feel of the game is what makes it worth playing. And I definitely agree. And I hope you guys try it out as well because it is a great game. And uh, it's very Twin Peaks <laughs> with a bit of Silent Hill thrown in there as well. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care guys.